Hi, and welcome back to the X Files. Today we are going to show Matty Vidra. Matty Vidra actually doesn't seem like that long ago, but his first goals scored for Watford were actually nine years ago now. He first joined us with the first influx of players from the Pozzo era. Um, one of the first players really to come over who'd got Udinese on his track record. And he made a pretty instant impact. Um, he came in and fundamentally he scored goals. As a forward, he had devastating pace. But combining with that, his hold-up play was really underrated. If you watch some of the goals we're going to see, see how many of them actually go through him in a deeper position. And then he uses his pace once the ball's been played to Dini or in well, some cases, for example, Alex Hayho or Igalo. He then uses his pace to rejoin the attack and hits and really attacks the back of the defence. When he broke clear of the defence, his pace would just take him away. And that seemed to give him a calmness when he was one-on-one -on -one with the keeper. And he'd be able to beat them side-footing it or he'd be able to hit it with his left on occasions. He also didn't waste time trying to get it on his right. Uh, there's a goal against Derby where the ball falls to him on his left and he just hits it. Um, and he gets good contact, basic stuff, but beats the goalkeeper. Matty's first season in 2012-2013, as you'll probably all remember, included the playoff final. And in order to include the playoff final, it included the playoff semi-final. And the goal that's probably forgotten by a lot of us in when we think about that game because of the Dini goal at the end. But his first goal was phenomenal. A ball played with the outside of the foot by Marco Cassetti over his shoulder and he hit it with his left into the far corner. He'd gone 13 games without a goal before that. What a way to break your drought. Let's have a look at some of his best goals from 
Matty didn't have the best body language in the world. He comes home, he sometimes looked like he was a bit miserable, like he didn't really want to be at Watford. And that combined with an agent who was extremely active when you got a goal scorer and who became championship player of the season in his first year, he wanted to move. He wanted to get into the Premiership and he got a move to West Bromwich Albion, but it really didn't work out that well. He'd really formed a partnership with, uh, with Deeney and just didn't seem to get that kind of uh, kickoff with anything at West Brom. So, 2014-2015, a season's break where Watford hadn't really done very much because we hadn't got somebody who would hit the back of the defence in the same way that Vidra had, and Vidra hadn't done particularly brilliantly at West Brom, saw him return and the old partnership come together. But this time, the partnership, there was a cuckoo in the nest. There was another person breaking up this 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 partnership of Dini and Vidra. Odion Igalo was there and he was suddenly scoring goals for fun. And it allowed Jakanovic to really sort of rotate Vidra um, and Igalo as to who was going to partner most of the time with Dini. Vidra's goals per minutes ratio was phenomenal again, as was obviously Igalo, as was Dini's. It was a great year, it was a great season. But he came back and really put the goals away. the second goal that sealed the game and effectively gave us promotion that was confirmed later on that day. Um, and it's a classic example of a, the counter-attacking that a Matty Vidra style player gives you. A phenomenal pace, a great ball across from Dini, um, and a calm finish, and a great second touch. He takes a first touch and there's a recovering defender, and his second touch just steers it away from the defender and means that he can get a nice shot with his left across. As I say, he was comfortable really with either foot. 
Matty Vidra has been discussed about whether or not he'd be coming back to the club. Personally, I think he'd be a great signing. Um, I think he offers a different kind of movement to somebody like Andre Gray, who is forever on the shoulder of the last defender and then runs towards the goal. So he's often offside, isn't necessarily creating that much in the build-up play. The exception was the goal in the last game of the season, where he came back in and deep against Swansea, got the ball, threw it out wide and went in with real intent um, in, the, in a kind of a Matty Vidra style. Yes, it hit his face and it went in, but it was, it was really something that uh, uh, Andre should do more of. Thank you for your time. I hope you enjoyed um, reminiscing or learning a little bit about Matty Vidra when he was here. Be interesting to see which strikers we pick up in the close season for our tilt back at the Premiership in 2021-22. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. As I say, uh, please like, please subscribe, please share. If you like the channel, do let us know if there's anything or any ex-players you'd like us to cover. Let us know what you think about them and we will put a little montage together and talk nonsense together. Who knows? Anyway, thanks for your time. Cheers.